Hello all, my name is Krishna Ayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are actually going to discuss about problems with encoders and decoders. And if you remember guys, uh, from my previous video already, I had actually shown you in my complete deep learning playlist, like how sequence to sequence learning with neural networks uh, happens. That is basically about encoders and decoders in depth intuition. Then we also understood about how to implement an encoder and decoder. And the best example that we took is neural machine learning uh, language translation. That basically means we try to convert from French uh, to English. So we had actually used that particular use case, right? Now considering this, what we are going to discuss now is basically what are the problems with encoders and decoders? Because as we go ahead, we need to understand about attention models. Then attention is all you need. That is basically transformers and then BERT and the other variations of BERT. We need to complete all these things. So let's understand how to do this. Uh, what is the main problems with encoders and decoders? Now guys, if you remember, this is basically my encoder on the left hand side. It uh, actually generates a vector W. Okay, so this is basically my, my vector W. Um, let me take the pen. Yes, so this is basically my vector W. And then this vector W is then passed to our decoders over here, right? And then this X output is then passed and finally the decoding is actually done. And if you really want to understand the maths, the maths, uh, you can watch my previous video. And apart from this guys, uh, this whole diagram is basically taken from the research paper. The research paper link will also be given in the description. Okay, now let's understand what is the main problem over here. Now, uh, what usually happens is that guys, researcher started experimenting this neural network machine translation with respect to different different sentence length okay now suppose if i was actually trying to translate from french to english right and that was the example that we did it was able to translate very very nicely with wonderful accuracy with respect to smaller sentences but with respect to the bigger sentences suppose that particular sentence had 100 words it was not able to translate okay that was the major problem uh, and considering this guys, I really want to show you one more thing, which is called as blue score. Okay. Now, what does this blue score basically show that in the Y axis, you can see blue score and in the X axis, you can actually see sentence length. Okay. And probably uh, the ho whole maths intuition, I'll try to create another video and make you understand how does blue score actually work. But this blue score basically says that as the sentence length is increasing, you know, this blue score is actually coming down, you know, so at this particular point till 10 length of the sentence uh, the blue score was giving us very good high score but as the sentence increases as the number of words in the sentence increases you could see that the blue score is actually decreasing so this was the problem the researchers for researchers found and what may what what may be the reason behind it guys let's understand that now understand this w uh, context vector that is being generated right and and if you know about encoders decoders guys each and every input over here like a b c right these all are words suppose if i'm considering words in my sentences and one by one it is actually passed usually we use word to vec representation or we use some embedding layer to provide some vector representation for a b c like that right and you all know that in in a, uh, basically in encoder we don't consider the output of this lstm rnn from each and every layer right this only the final after the end of string is actually coming we usually consider this particular vector and this vector is only passed to the decoders and from this the decoder will decode it and will try to see what what is the exact translation now guys when the sentences are usually long you know this vector that is actually generated right it is not able to capture all the information of all these particular words Right? it is not able to capture usually it is not able to capture if i give you an example of human being suppose if i and probably guys this all are pretty much amazing as i have always told you that deep learning is basically to mimic human brain like how you we human being do things probably most of the things are implemented in that similar way okay let me take in one example guys suppose if i tell one human to basically uh, if I give him a hundred word uh, sentences and I'll tell him to translate to some other language. Okay, probably if he knows how to translate from English to French. Suppose if I give him hundred words in English and I'll tell him directly uh, to memorize it and then translate it uh, to French, right? It is not that much possible. He'll not be able to uh, accurately convert those sentences, right? So what does that basically means that this W, whenever the sentences are long, it will not be able to capture the importance of all the words, right? Or we can also say the essence 
essence of all the words it will not be able to capture but in the case of smaller sentences definitely it will be able to capture because we are just passing this w vector right we are not passing each and every word output we are not taking each and every word output with respect to this layer as soon as i'm passing the word itself i'm just taking this w vector and then passing it and because of this you know usually this does not perform with respect to longer sentences now how we can actually solve it so there is something called as attention models guys so what we will be doing is that i'll show you that particular diagram over here and probably we'll be discussing about this in our next class uh, next uh, session over here you can see this instead of just using the encoders in the form of lstm uh, rnn here what we are actually doing is that we are taking bidirectional neural network now there are two things that will come into picture which again i'll be discussing in our next session first of all we will be taking some window size now what does this window size basically specify understand guys uh, as i told you that this is completely inspired uh, if i take an example of machine learning uh, if i want to translate one language to the other right suppose if a human being is actually translating first of all how the translation will happen first of all suppose we'll suppose i take a window of six words initially i'll say six words and then the translator will convert it right then again i'll take the next six words and again the translator will convert and that is the whole concept about attention models initially we'll just take a uh, window sized uh, words in a sentences maybe three or four depends on the it depends on the hyperparameter that we select and probably suppose if i select four to five words right in a sentences then i'll pass that particular information to the decoder the decoder will convert it then again the next uh, next window size words it will actually capture then again uh, you know uh, it will pass to the decoder and the decoder will basically uh, convert that particular sentences yeah some some amount of maths are involved in that which we will discuss in our next session but in order to solve this problems with respect to encoders and decoders we will start using something called as attention models right so this attention model this whole architecture probably will be discussing in our next session you know where we will try to understand each and everything what this bidirectional model does when i'm passing this x1 word what it does what is this alpha t comma 1 alpha t comma 2 alpha t comma 3 you know and you can see that right uh, this this x1 x2 x3 is basically one of my windows right right suppose if i take three as a size and i'll i'll be taking this information passing it to my decoder then i'll move once towards the right and again combine this information and again pass it to the decoder and the decoder will be doing so we will try to understand all this particular maths with respect to attention model but if someone says or if someone ask you an interview question what are the major problems with respect to encoders and decoders right because now we have transformers now we have bird there are some reasons always you, sh you should try to understand what are the problems in encoders and decoders and why is the next model actually coming up okay that is pretty much important to understand so i have i hope you have understood let me just make some points with respect to problems so so the first point with respect to encoder and decoder so encoder and decoder usually do not perform usually do not perform well with longer sentences right as i told you with respect to machine learning language translation it will not be able to do this how this is tested researchers tested or experimented with experimented and found out lower found out lower blue score right blue blue score sorry blue score and probably i'll discuss about the maths the third thing is that guys uh, in order to overcome this in order to overcome this uh, you know how human translator does the work right we will be we will be considering in a, probably in the next session we will discuss about this so how the human translator does his work about translating words right translating words in sentences right we basically consider a window size and then probably uh, we do the translation one uh, taking that particular window size okay um, translating the words in sentences and here i can actually take an example of uh, i'll be using a kind of bidirectional neural network sorry bidirectional rnn lstm rnn okay so and always remember guys why i'm doing this in my next session because i really want you all to revise about bidirectional lstm rnn and how it is used probably i can also show you the research paper which i'm actually talking about and that diagram that i had actually taken was from this particular research paper 
okay and uh, again the link will be given in the description but i'll discuss this uh in my next session uh probably uh, in this particular session i really just want to discuss about the problems of encoders and decoders so neural network neural machine learning translation by jointly learning to align and translate and we will then understand about this working right this is pretty much important how that particular issue is actually solved by using this and as you go down you'll be able to see that now the blue score will be able will be get be able to get a better one you can see rnn search 50 you know with 50 layers probably i guess the blue score will be pretty much good you know so then because of that particular issue we did some kind of implementation of this kind and you could see that score score was the blue score was pretty much better it did not come down right so yes we'll discuss this in the next video but i hope you like it but in this particular video i really wanted to make you understand what is the problem with the encoders and decoders and yes these all are the outcomes that we have actually found out i hope you like this particular video and yes guys in the next video will also be coming up very very soon so please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you and all bye bye